Go Go Loser Ranger or Sentai Daishikaku if you're a fan of the Japanese translation. Yeah, it's an anime version of a group of teens with attitude recruited to knock out some aliens into next week. Mmm, yes and also not really. So that's why I'm here to talk about the premise, story, characters, art and brief you on my final thoughts on the show so far. Let's get down to it. A group of aliens waged war against humans. The defenders of the planet, the Dragon Keepers, ended up coming out on top and defeating the alien's head honcho. Instead of wiping the whole side out after, they proposed a treaty ensuring a facade of them still trying to invade the planet but always fall short at the hands of the dragon keepers. Why? Well, to maintain the recruitment levels and have some showbiz money. This has been going on for a while now and an individual among the alien faction is really sick of it. So much that he's taken on the task of infiltrating the ranger force and destroying them from the inside. One of the reasons it's possible is thanks to one of the race's abilities of morphing into anybody they want. The show covers this guy's story as he encounters loads of twists and turns on his journey. Now, there's a lot to digest from this story. On top of that, this might be the only new story this season where I genuinely don't know where it's gonna go. So I'm gonna keep my mouth shut, hold the ironic predictions and just tune in. And I'm pretty sure revenge stories are kinda like that, but I could be wrong. It's just a case of whether or not the other themes of the series is your fit. And this time around, it is for me. I know humour is subjective, but I'm a big fan of satirical humour. And couple that with not actually being able to fully predict where this is going, yeah I'm invested. Fighter D is our vindictive protagonist. He's sick of the status quo so much that he wants to bring the dragon keepers down to their knees. The only problem is he's so weak that one of the dragon keepers could take him out while blindfolded with both hands tied behind their back. So he resorts to some really underhanded tactics along with the help of Hibiki Sakurama and Yumeko Suzukiri, the two sales representatives he encounters during his visit to the performance arena. Sakurama is our sympathetic human who goes to seriously alarming lengths to provide our main character deep cover for his operation, but somehow hopes at some point he has a change of heart and facilitates the coexistence of monsters and humans because, well, that's what his parents died for, who were also killed by a monster deity that they worshipped. Yeah, the story is kind of all over the place, and to be honest, it's so all over the place that I can actually see the series ending the way Sakurama wants it to somehow. Suzukiri is the brains of the whole operation. It seems she was waiting for someone as foolhardy as Fighter D to play as point man for this job. Now, the Ranger Force. Simply put, they're the assholes of the show. Another version of the seven from the boys, if you will. Maybe the ringleader hasn't shown as many sociopathic tendencies as Homelander but the warning signs are definitely there. We've seen him cave in the skull of his main apprentice just because he questioned his ability after having made a serious fuck up, then proceeded to continue eating his meal while the fresh blood was still on his hands. The blue dragon keeper seems to have a stick up his ass, like most deputies let's be honest. The pink ranger tends to express too much love for a younger brother, not much to say about the others, we'll obviously find out more as the show goes on. Everyone seems to be overly animated. Suzukiri may be the exception who's kind of flat but she's playing that past the point of care and demeanor quite well so she's fine. Apart from the obvious comical scenes, the art is clean. Just a shame the choreography isn't much to write home about but that's clearly not meant to be the main attraction so I'm cool with that as well. Overall I had this series on my to read list before the show came out. Life got in the way and I just didn't get round to it. I somewhat regret not being able to read it at the time because I enjoyed the show for what it is but there's no way I'm waiting for the next episode to come out to find out what happens next. I want to know about the next stupid subplot point ASAP. Those of you who've watched the show, let me know what you think about it in the comment section below or just leave a like. That helps the channel too. That's it for now. Have a blessed one. See ya.